Good evening, I'm Chief Meteorologist Danielle Dozier here with a radar update. We have numerous showers and thunderstorms that are ongoing across the Tennessee Valley. The strongest have been producing some hail and some strong wind gusts. These storms go all the way from eastern Giles County along I-65 entering Lincoln County, Tennessee, all the way down toward the Moulton area. Also have a batch of thunderstorms near Coleman. Want to zoom in here on the one over Moulton right now in Langtown. Langtown, some frequent clouds around lightning as well as some heavier downpours. At one point had a small hail core with pea-sized hail on that one. And as it tracks up to the northeast, it's going to be approaching places like Lawson at 1015 and Austinville at 1016. Some strong wind gusts up around 30, possibly 40 miles per hour with that one. And then this batch of storms here crossing into Hartsell and eventually Eva 1012 there. Hartsell at 1016, quite a bit of lightning on that one. And then also frequent lightning up here in Tennessee with times of arrival on your screen. Blanche at 1004, Howell at 1016 as that crosses into Lincoln County, Tennessee. I'll be back with more radar updates and if any warnings are issued, we'll break back in but for now news 19 at 10 starts now you're watching north alabama's news leader this is news 19 at 10. The Limestone County Sheriff's Office is now reopening an investigation into the death of Casey White's ex-girlfriend in 2008. That's our top story tonight at 10. I'm Emily Forrester. And I'm Greg Screws, and this comes as the hunt for the murder suspect and the corrections officer continues. The investigation involves the death of Christy Shelton. Investigators say she was shot to death with a sawed-off shotgun. Her death at the time was ruled a suicide. News 19's Archie Snowden has been following this investigation and has more tonight. Okay, thank you, Emily. At the time of the death of 31-year-old Christy Lynn Shelton in 2008, police say that Casey White was there at the home in Lexington, but after an investigation, he was ruled out as a suspect. But her family said they never believed that story, asking questions about exactly what Casey was doing at the time that Casey, that Shelton was shot. Casey and Shelton were dating at the time. Her family has taken to social media to push for a reinvestigation into this case. In a video sent to News 19, the daughter of Christy Shelton says that when Casey White escaped with the assistance of prison guard Vicki White, it opened up a range of uncontrollable emotions for her family who was seeking justice for their mother. So Casey White was with my mom the night that she committed suicide. Um, nothing was really ever investigated. I don't even know if they took him in for questioning. So maybe this video will fall in the right hands of someone that can actually make a difference or um, look into it more, maybe uh, investigate. I'm not really sure, but. Now, seven years after the death of Shelton, Casey White shot his ex-girlfriend during, during a crime spree, sending him to prison for 75 years. Casey White remains on the run, but the more his dark uh, past comes up, coming to light, he is still in trouble. So a spokesperson for the Limestone County Sheriff's Office confirmed that they are communicating with the family and is reviewing the case. All right, thank you, Archie. The manhunt for Vicki White and Casey White is almost a week old now. Authorities are still trying to find out where they went after escaping the Lauderdale County Jail. U.S. Marshals have released detailed photos of Casey White's tattoos that could be used to identify him, as well as images of how they believe Vicki White may have changed her hair. Casey White, known for having a heavily tattooed left arm, the tattoos on his arm in black ink, has several imagery of several skulls. He also has tattoos on his chest and a shoulder tattoo on his right arm, as well as a Confederate flag tattoo between his shoulders. Officials believe he is affiliated with the Alabama-based white supremacist prison gang, Southern Brotherhood. And again, U.S. Marshals believe Vicki White, the Lauderdale County Jail's Assistant Director of Corrections, may have dyed her hair from blonde to a darker color. They also believe she may have cut her hair shorter to try to make herself less recognizable. Marshals say the pair was last seen on April 29th in Rogersville. Now, Casey White has a pending murder case, one the county district attorney says must be tried once he is recaptured. But there have been a number of issues with White's case, and District Attorney Chris Connolly says that's what led to his transfer from Donaldson Prison back to the Lauderdale County Jail in February. Now, Connolly says restrictions on Casey White's attorneys hindered their progress to the point the defense requested he be transferred to the county jail so they could prepare his case. The judge ordered his transport in February 2020. In anticipation of an April trial, but that trial date was continued until June 13th. So that June trial will likely be detailed further by the chaos of the escape. However, once the two are located, Conley says both Vicki White and Casey White will have a price to pay. 
he's going to be charged with escape in the first degree, which is a B felony. I forget how many priors he's got, but um, and she can be charged as an accomplice to that as well. Plus, there's a separate charge against her for for aiding in the in the escape. The new charge for Casey White would be in addition to the capital murder charge he was scheduled to go to trial for back in June or in June. Both of these people are considered extremely dangerous. If you see either of them, don't go anywhere near them. Immediately call 911. So breaking news, Huntsville officials are currently working to clear a bad wreck on Meridian Street in front of Martin Luther King Elementary School. Right now, both ways are blocked near the wreck, and Don Webster with HIMSI says two people are in critical condition. They were taken to a local hospital. We'll continue to follow this story. We'll bring you the latest on air and online. And some, an update in a breaking news story we brought you earlier. One man is dead after an officer involved shooting in Albertville. That's according to Marshall County Coroner Cody Nugent. That shooting happened on Terry Circle in Albertville just off Highway 431. Albertville police say their officers along with deputies from the Marshall County Sheriff's Office responded. Events led to a shooting involving a gentleman that lives at this residence. Uh, who is presently deceased. Uh, we have the SBI in now doing the investigation. And that's about all we know right now. The State Bureau of Investigation is investigating the shooting, and that is standard in the case of officer-involved shootings. U.S. regulators now strictly limiting who can receive Johnson & Johnson's COVID vaccines due to a rare but serious risk of blood clots. Today, the Food and Drug Administration said the company shot should only be given to adults who cannot receive a different vaccine or if they specifically request J&J &J shot. In December, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommended using the Moderna and Pfizer shots over Johnson & Johnson's because of safety issues. Wall Street suffered its worst day of the year as stocks cratered today over worries about the economy. CBS News correspondent Bradley Blackburn looks at how Americans are handling the shaky stock market and uncertain economic days ahead. Inflation, rising interest rates, and fears of a looming recession made the perfect recipe for Thursday's market sell-off. By the closing bell, the Dow Jones Industrial Average plunged more than 1,000 points, or over 3%. I think uh, it, it's still a sign that inflation is out of control and people need to handle it. From Main Street to Wall Street, investors worry the Federal Reserve's efforts to tamp down inflation by raising interest rates might slow the economy too much. We are uncertain about what inflation is going to do. Uh, what the Fed is going to do in reaction to inflation. Every day, Americans are feeling the pinch of inflation as they shell out more for a long list of essential items. Since March 2021, the cost of food, energy, and gas have all seen major increases. I have a truck now that has 200 gallons, 250 gallons of fuel. I put $1,000 into it and didn't fill it up. Investor Fred Clare says he's riding out Wall Street's daily roller coaster ride, but recently seeing more dips than jumps in his 401k. I've lost like maybe $30,000 in the market. So at this point, I might as well just let it sit there. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger says Americans concerned about their nest egg might avoid a short term approach. Most of us are saving for long term goals like retirement or college, likely years or decades in the future. Hopefully, those who are already retired didn't have as much risk in the stock market. According to Schlesinger, if you sell your stocks now, you're timing the market. And that, she says, rarely works. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Today, Amber Heard continued her testimony on the stand telling jurors that Johnny Depp sexually molested her with a liquor bottle. The night of the alleged assault in 2015 in Australia is also the night that the tip of Depp's finger was severed. Depp says Heard threw a vodka bottle at him. Heard's lawyers say Depp injured himself. Depp is suing Heard for libel over an op-ed she wrote in the Washington Post, describing herself as a public figure representing domestic abuse. The trial will be on break through May 16th. And the L.A. County District Attorney's Office says it won't file felony charges against the man who attacked Dave Chappelle on stage. 23-year-old Isaiah Lee is accused of attacking Chappelle on stage at the Hollywood Bowl Tuesday night. The case has now been referred to the L.A. City Attorney's Office, which could file misdemeanor charges. The LAPD says Lee had a fake gun attached to a knife when he stormed the stage. Investigators are still trying to figure out a motive for all this. 
Well, I'm keeping my eye on the radar right now. You can see numerous thunderstorms ongoing, especially north of Moulton and around the Coleman area and heading into Fayetteville, Tennessee. I'll have a live radar update tracking these storms for you tonight and a look ahead to a severe storm risk for Friday. Stay with us. Now, your weather authority forecast, sponsored by Greenway of the Shoals. No fees whatsoever on your next car. A new way, the right way. Greenwayoftheshoals.com. Welcome back. Taking a live look at our radar right now, we do have these thunderstorms that are ongoing across the Tennessee Valley, producing heavy rain, frequent lightning, and the strongest have been putting down some strong wind gusts up close to 60 miles per hour when we had that warning up into Lawrence County earlier. Also had some one-inch hail on that. A couple of the storms across northwest Alabama earlier also putting down some smaller hail. Right now, we're tracking groups of thunderstorms. This one that's over Cortland and just west of the Trinity area, putting down some very heavy rainfall and frequent clouds around lightning that's going to continue to track up to the northeast moving into places like Coxie at 1022 and Tanner at 1032 and again this is not severe but some gusty winds and perhaps maybe even a little bit of small hail on some of those deeper red shaded colors out there this evening 1014 now and you can see these storms crossing I-65 through Coleman County will continue to move up toward Florette and Lacey Spring and the times of arrival there on the left of your screen again heavy rain frequent clouds around lightning some gusts
gusty winds. And then as we look up into Tennessee, this is in Lincoln County back west of the Fayetteville area. You can see places like Petersburg at 1018, Fayetteville High School area around 1021 and Fayetteville at 1023 on the current path. And this is just a radar loop to show you all the showers and storms that are tracking across our area as expected for us tonight. Uh, luckily, and while an isolated severe storm is possible, widespread severe weather at this point is not in the picture. So we will continue to keep you posted, but some high wind gusts and perhaps even some hail associated with the strongest tonight. 74 right now in Huntsville, currently dry. 73 in Scottsboro, 68 in Florence tomorrow morning. It's going to be a wet start for us. So grab the umbrella, 68 degrees out there early, and then we're looking at those showers and storms coming through during your morning commute. Daytime highs are going to be in the upper 70s. The winds will be strong, gusting up to 30 miles per hour outside of any thunderstorms. We do have that risk of thunderstorms tomorrow between about 6 or 7 a.m. and noon is the time frame, uh, time frame here. Uh, areas in dark green and yellow with a risk of some severe weather and a little bit higher of a chance here for the areas in yellow, including Huntsville, Sand Mountain and Lookout Mountain all the way down toward the Gadsden area. Here's the latest timeline. So these showers and storms will continue to lift up toward the northeast with time overnight tonight, weakening as they do so. As we head into tomorrow morning, stay weather aware. We will be having scattered thunderstorms moving across the area from southwest to northeast as a cold front moves through. And you can see as we get closer to about 11 a.m. and midnight or 11 a.m. and uh, noon, that is, these storms are pushing out of the area. And so we're really going to have to watch those tomorrow because we could be seeing some damaging winds and some hail. Tornado threat is low, but it is not zero. And as you see, our extended forecast for the Shoals and Sand Mountain looking pretty good once we get past Friday. Maybe a few sprinkles and spots on Saturday, especially out in northeast Alabama. And then here we're looking at plenty of sunshine for Mother's Day. Heat really building as we head into next week. All right, thank you, Danielle. CDs, compact disc, they may seem like a relic of the past. They're making a comeback. Why more music lovers are turning to disc to listen to their favorite artists.
So over the last 40 years or so, people have consumed music in many ways, like vinyl. You had the 33, got the album, or you got a 45. So are you old enough to remember these? Kids, these are called eight tracks. And many of us still have cassettes, but one way to listen to music is making a comeback. And it's not just vinyl. It's probably something you have laying around the house and you have a lot of them in your car. CDs. CDs, compact disc. For the first time in 17 years, CD sales are up. In 2021, CD sales were up to almost 40 and a half million units sold. I was shocked to hear that, to be honest with you. Jimmy Nutt knows a lot about making music for consumers. He actually knows a whole lot about making music. The uptick in CD sales is very interesting to me, and I think it does go back to just wanting to have a physical product. Jimmy is an A-list producer who owns Nut House Studios in Sheffield. He's worked with people like Jason Isbell, the Alabama Shakes, and the Blind Boys of Alabama. He has a Grammy with his name on it for producing the best bluegrass album of 2015 with the Steel Drivers. Some attribute the CD sales boost to big acts who release new music like BTS, Adele, and Taylor Swift. This increase in CD sales, Jimmy Nutt suspects, goes back to something that made vinyl great. If you're a music fan, you want something you can hold, something you can put in your hand, something you can get an autograph on or whatever, something that commemorates a, a show that you saw. For Jimmy, CDs are a work tool. Personal preference, environment, and storage issues can affect or dictate what you listen to or listen on, but a major player on the musical landscape like Jimmy Nutt, what platform would he recommend that you use to listen to music? There are some really good Bluetooth speaker systems. I think there's a company called Sonos that makes a, a system that's pretty good. There are others as well where you can actually have multiple speakers in different rooms. I mean, I think in today's world, you certainly have to pick a subscription service, a music streaming service. I use Apple Music. I'm an Apple guy and I love it. I listen to it a lot. I can literally make playlists and I can listen to all my favorite artists and I love that and that's a big part of how I listen to music is through streaming. The CDs are always in rotation for Jimmy Nutt, whether it's for personal preference or for work. Mainly for me, I listen to CDs when I'm mixing a, a record and I want to listen in my car and I want to hear the highest fidelity that I can and, and listen to my mixes. But the journey to consuming music, as bonding as it can be to others, it boils down to what you want to hear. I don't think there's one way. I think there's multiple ways you can consume music, you know, and a great set of headphones. I mean, I've got some JBL headphones that are Bluetooth that I love. Jimmy Nutt is just the coolest guy in the world. Oh my goodness. And Rob Sheffield from Rolling Stone Magazine says compact discs were never about romance. They're about function. They just worked. And CDs aren't going anywhere because it's such a big business. And folks are apparently going back to them. All right. Well, the Auburn ambush has made its way to the Rocket City. Bruce Pearl, Brian Harson, and Jeff Grabo were all in town to grace the Tiger faithful. They're talking everything from SUNY Lee to NIL and the NBA draft. We've got that for you up next in sports.
now, Tennessee Valley Sports with Rocco DeSangro. Ambush has a few meanings, one of them being a group of Tigers, and that's exactly what Auburn calls its Alumni Association engagement tour. Bruce Pearl, Brian Harson, and Jeff Graba made the trip to Huntsville to talk everything from SUNY Lee's decision, the NBA draft, and name, image, and likeness. She doesn't have to make a decision. That's 2024. She has to make a decision whether she trains for 2024 or not. And that's been her decision. She wants to train. She doesn't want to get caught off guard. And she doesn't want to commit herself because she's pretty dang busy right now. I don't know who you take ahead of Jabari. I just don't. That is absolutely all about Jabari and nothing about, else, about anybody else on the board. Um, he's the best I've ever coached. Recruiting is the lifeblood of your program. So it doesn't matter what the rule is, it doesn't matter what's happening, everything bleeds into recruiting. So you're always thinking about, all right, how do we navigate this? And, and right now we're all navigating name, image, and likeness. So this was a pretty cool experience for Tim Miller and the Hazel Green girls basketball team. Colonel James Welsh, commander of second recruiting brigade, hosted the Lady Trojans to honor them for going 35 and 0 and winning their fifth straight state title. Welch compared the success the team saw this past season to the Army motto of winning matters. The high school baseball postseason charges on, and Madison Academy is one of our many local teams vying for a blue map. Mustangs playing host to Alexandria, looking to advance to the semis. Game one of this best of three series, bottom one. Mustangs trailing by a run. Alex Wade singles to right. T. Foster advances to third. M.A. now threatening. After a Carson Crehan walk, the bases are juiced for Jake Stone. And this is a softly hit grounder to short. Stone is flying. The throw to first, not in time. And the Mustangs tie it at one. Madison Academy goes on to win game one, nine to six. And game two to advance to the final four. Lindsey Lane, Phil Campbell, and Decatur Heritage all moving on per the AHSAA as well. We'll have all the scores on our website later on tonight. Trash Pandas in bounce back mode after a 13-4 loss to the Lookouts. Hartzell's choir sung the national anthem. That was pretty cool. In the third, we're scoreless. Zach Humphreys singles to shallow center, scoring Levon Soto. Rocket City takes a 1-0 lead. Southern League Pitcher of the Month, Chase Silseth, was mowing the Lookouts down. Six innings pitched, two earned on two hits, and striking out 10. This one would be decided in the ninth, though. That's where Soto played hero with the walk-off on Cinco de Mayo. Olivia took that video. She was in the stands tonight. She told me to credit her, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> On Cinco de Mayo, though, the Trash Pandas win a thriller 3-2 to the final. Hey, LaVon, how's it feel? Uh, yeah, uh, first thing, I, I was looking for one piece. And I make a solid contact for, uh, for a score that, that run. And that's it. Hey, feel great. I think it's uh, my third time in my life, so it's... This is great. That's awesome. A little drama there. I love that. <laughs> love that. Uh, quick look at weather. Yeah, we have thunderstorms that are now approaching the Huntsville area. They're not severe, but you're going to expect some heavier downpours and some frequent lightning out there. And we'll watch the radar all night long for you to let you know if anything uh, becomes warned on. All right. We're going to Friday. <laughs>